hear the cicadas are about to emerge in the American South and Midwest. And honestly, I'm a little jealous because I don't think they're going to make their way all the way to where I live. And I have some pretty fond memories of seeing cicada exoskeletons as a kid. The word cicada comes to English from Latin, cicada, spelled the same way, which meant either, yes, a cicada or a tree cricket. And this word is not native to Latin, but actually comes from an unknown Mediterranean language. So what people are getting ready for right now are the emergence of periodical cicadas, which are cicadas that emerge in synchronized groups every certain number of years. So this year we're going to have the emergence of two broods in the United States, and those are brood 13 and brood 19. There's also annual cicadas, which also spend a number of years underground, but they don't emerge in a synchronized pattern, so you get a few every year. The word brood means a group of children or young and comes from Old English brood, which meant young that hatch from eggs. The root there is bro, which refers to something that's heated, and actually shows up in a bunch of other words, including broil, braise, and even fervor through a couple of sound changes. Several species can be part of a single brood. The American periodical cicadas are part of genus Magicicada, which is a word that probably derives from Latin magi, meaning more, plus the word cicada. As in, lots of cicadas at once, I think. So brood 13 is on a 17-year cycle and consists of Magicicada cassini, M. septendecum, and M. septendecula. Cassini is an Italian surname, but the words septendecum and septendecula both just mean 17 in Latin. That's from sept meaning seven and dec meaning 10. Brood 19, on the other hand, is confusingly on a 13-year cycle and has four species found among them. Those are M. neotrechidim, M. trechidim, M. tradecacini, and M. tradecula. Tradecum and tradecula both mean 13 in Latin. That's from tre, 3, plus dec, 10. And neotradecum means the new 13, as in a recent branch from the tradecum. Each species has its own specific song. Songs can be made from clicking the wings, through stridulation, which is rubbing one body part against another, and probably comes from a similar root as strident. Or sound can be made by using an organ called a timbre. Timbles are found on the male and consist of thin membranes that can be vibrated using small muscles. Timbre comes from a word for a kettle drum, probably from the Latin word tympanum, meaning drum. And this word traces back to a, the Greek typos, meaning a mark or a blow, as in hitting something, giving us also the word type, as in something that's been marked as a member of a category. And that word has later been applied to the act of typing letters. And I really love finding out that you have an ancestral word that's split into two versions, and now we have one word that's the literal thing, and the other that's the figurative version of the same thing. Cicadas spend years underground, feeding and growing out of sight. But by the time they emerge as adults, they're mostly just interested in one thing. Finding a mate and producing the next generation of their brood. And they are loud about it. The song of the cicadas can be seen as a joyful one. They sing unceasingly, with not a care for anything else. The ancient Greeks recognized this and respected their dedication to the performance. In Plato's Phaedrus, Socrates tells the story of the cicadas and links them to the muses, the goddesses of the arts. The story goes that the cicadas used to be human beings who lived before the birth of the muses. When the muses were born and song was created for the first time, some of the people of that time were so overwhelmed with the pleasure of singing that they forgot to eat or drink, and so they died without even realizing it. It is from them that the race of the cicadas came into being, and as a gift from the muses, they have no need of nourishment once they are born. Instead, they immediately burst into song, without food or drink, until the time for them to die. After they die, they go to the muses and tell each one of them which mortals have honored her. Cicadas are hemipterans, the true bugs, and they feed on plant sap. As nymphs, they suck the juices from underground roots. And as adults, they can keep doing this, but they're mostly focused on singing. And more often than causing damage, the emergence of cicadas provides a huge feast for any creatures who like eating bugs. 
Another ancient Greek story actually links cicadas with the concept of immortality. In this story, a mortal named Tithonus is in love with a goddess named Eos, who wants to grant Tithonus immortality. But she's not able to give him eternal youth to go with it, and so Tithonus, although he never dies, ages and shrivels and eventually shrinks up until he's nothing but a cicada left behind. And so this idea of cicadas being immortal probably has to do with the fact that they come back periodically. It's like a, they are back from the dead. And along the way, they also leave these wonderful shells behind. They shed their skin, which is a bit like what snakes do. And snakes also have a reputation in mythology of being immortal. So tag me if you see any cool cicadas. I'd love to hear their song.